Dear listeners, help us reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Something super special awaits once we hit that milestone. Subscribe now and join the fun. Thursday. Bob sat at the table and looked at his bottle of Miller Lite. He had only bought a six-pack because if things went wrong in the next few minutes, he didn't want to have enough beer to get drunk. He heard her music stop upstairs, so he knew she was about done getting ready normally. He worked late on Thursdays because it was his wife's girls' night out with her friends. His parents would watch their daughter Casey while his wife went and had a few drinks with her female co-workers. He would finish up the week's paperwork so he could scoot out early on Friday and have more time with his family. It was actually a great arrangement. He got some control over his busy schedule. His parents got some time to spoil their five-year-old grandchild, and his wife got some personal time to relax and commiserate with friends. At least that was what he had thought as he heard her moving around upstairs in the bathroom. He thought back to the lunch he had with Vicky last Tuesday, Tuesday. I got to get out of the shop more, he thought, or at least see if they would deliver these sandwiches because they are amazing. He had taken a seat so he could watch the door and soon saw a familiar figure step into the restaurant. He noticed her looking around, so he stood up a bit and waved his arm. She saw him and started walking. In his direction at 31 years old. Vicky was the oldest of the friends his wife went out with. She was also his favorite and the only one who was married. She had a way about her that put everyone at ease without being the doormat of the group. He had to admit she was pretty good looking also with her dark wavy hair and white complexion, no jugs to speak of at all. But she had a really beautiful face and legs that went all the way up. Her husband, Ron, thought she hung the moon and the feeling was reciprocated. She still got her share of male attention as she pulled up a chair and sat down across from him. Thank you for meeting me, Bob. I know how busy you are at work and taking this time out can't have been easy, she said as she looked intently at his face. Uh, no problem, Sixth Bob said. Although I have to tell you, I feel a little uncomfortable meeting you here without Sharon. I don't make it a point to have lunch with pretty ladies that I am not hitched to, but you said it was about Sharon, so I'm all ears. I am guessing you want to surprise her for her birthday next month. He was not expecting to see the sad look on her face when he mentioned having lunch with her. He also was surprised to see her face fall more when he mentioned Sharon's birthday. What was up, Bob? I know you and Sharon love each other, and I have seen you together enough to know that what you guys have is special, so it is only because of this that I am coming to you. This may end up ruining my friendship with her. But if you can save your marriage, I okay with it. There is no easy way to say this, but Sharon has been seeing someone for the three months Bob was shocked. This must be a joke, a bad joke, and he told Vicky as much. I'm so sorry, Bob, but it is not a joke about two months ago after you picked up this project you were working on. Sharon was in a funk at work. She was grumpy, and when we went out, she was even quieter than usual. After a few martinis, we were able to pull out of her that she was missing you and feeling abandoned. She also started talking about how she felt you, too, were just a middle-aged married couple who were letting life pass you by. At this point, the waiter stopped by to take Vicky's order. She ordered a cob salad along with a iced tea with lemon. Bob was still reeling from the idea that his wife would be sneaking around over the eight years they had been together. He would have bet his life that Sharon would have told him if she was unhappy. He thought they had always been honest about their feelings, even when they knew the other would disagree. He looked at Vicky and asked the question he needed to know the answer to. Immediately, has she screwed him? He whispered, and no, at least not that I know of. And I think I would be able to tell, believe it or not, your wife is a pretty open person that is why I am shocked by how she is acting, Bob. You have to know that every woman I have talked to has said these same things. I figure it is almost how you guys always complain about being dragged down by the ball and chain or whatever terms you use amongst yourselves when she started talking about this. We all commiserated and told her the same things. Sheik a hell of a catch. You should pay more attention to her yada yada. Unfortunately, that night my sister was there. What does your sister have to do with anything? Bob asked, fighting down some anger. Frankly, my sister is a 304, Vicky replied. The waiter that brought her tea raised an eyebrow as he overheard her comment. Vicky took a sip, then continued. My parents were serial cheaters. I have no idea who cheated first, but they were always looking to get revenge on the other. 
When I was 17, I asked them why they bothered staying together, and they looked at me like I was from another planet. They told me they loved each other, and that is all that mattered. This affected my sister, and I differently, I felt like cheating was the best way to ruin a happy relationship, and my sister felt that cheating was fine as long as you loved each other. I love my sister, but she is such an idiot about things anyways. Back to the story, my sister Jerry made the comment that if she wasn't getting romance at home, maybe she should try finding it somewhere else. I told Jerry she was wrong, but Hannah and Gail started talking about the best way to pick up a guy and how to keep it secret, I think, for those two. It was purely an academic conversation, especially since they aren't married at the time. Sharon said she would never go behind your back, but I think my dumbass sister planted a seed in your wife's head. Why do you think that Bob asked now that he wasn't sure she had slept around? He was beginning to process more information. None of this was fun to hear, but he had always believed that knowledge was power. Because the next week, Luke Jonas and his crew showed up at the Red Horse Saloon where we were drinking, Sharon says. She didn't invite him, but she did mention to him that we were going to try line dancing that night. It was actually kind of fun having more people try something new, and it would have been great except for Luke. Now he had a name. Knowledge is power. Tell me about this. Luke Bob growled. Vicky smiled a little at the tone of Bob's voice. She continued. Luke Jonas is the company Romeo. He takes a run at every female, and any who give him the slightest interest find themselves the recipient of his charms. He doesn't care if they are married or even if they are particularly good-looking. He just likes the chase your wife shot him down early on, and he never pushed until that night. Now he is chasing your wife, and she is running instead, standing her ground, putting a stop to it. It is an open secret that if Luke gets any more charges of harassment brought against him, he is fired. She could end his advances, and she isn't, in fact, they have been regular seatmates at the cafeteria for the last couple months, whispering and giggling. I have tried talking to her about this, but she just gets angry and tells me they are friends, and that Luke listens to her and understands her problems. I asked her if she would act like this. If you were sitting across the table and she had the decency to blush, then she got mad and said something to the effect that you wouldn't even notice after that. I backed off and decided to keep an eye on her. They seemed to cool it off at work, and I thought that things had run its course until three weeks ago. Vicky's lunch came at this point, and she started eating it while looking at Bob for a reaction. Bob took a long drink of his lemonade, but didn't taste it at all. His chest cavity felt empty, and his eyes didn't want it to focus. He was wondering how she could think that he wouldn't care about her flirting with another man. He knew he had never been overly jealous, but that was because he loved and trusted his wife. And as for not noticing her, he wondered if he had been that distant with this work project. It was going to be a huge payoff, but maybe he had taken it too far. He wondered what had happened three weeks ago. Did he really want to know they ate in silence for the next five minutes or so while he tried to process what she had told him? He was angry. No doubt there was no reason for her to be so tight with another man, but he could almost see her logic if he had been more attentive. Then maybe this whole thing wouldn't have happened also other than not telling him about being so flirty with this. She hadn't actually lied to him. Lies of omission, sure enough, but so far he could overlook. Her behavior and work to fix this, he would talk to her and get her side of the story as long as she was honest and agreed to stay away from a hole they could move on so far he didn't see any lasting damage done unless something happened within the last three weeks. So tell me about three weeks ago, how bad is it? He was back on some solid mental ground. He had his feet under him. He could work with this. She looked at him with sympathy. This is where it gets rough, Bob. Three weeks ago, we all ended up at the Red Horse Saloon again for line dancing. Luke and his boys showed up, and we were all dancing together and having a good time. Sharon had been drinking a little more than she usually does. Luke had been buying her drinks all night and was getting quite tipsy. I went to the bathroom with her, and she was more out of it than I realized when she came out of the bathroom stall. She had her panties in her hand and put them in her purse. I asked her what that was about, and she said she wanted to feel free. Well, she was almost drunk, so I chalked it up to the alcohol and helped her back to our table. I started rounding up Hannah and Gail to take Sharon back to my house, so she wouldn't come home too drunk when I noticed that Sharon and Luke were bumping and grinding on the dance floor. The line dancing was done, and it was just a jukebox for the rest of the night. I saw her panties in her hand, and she put them in Luke's pocket as the song ended. Unfortunately, so did everyone else. There were catcalls from all over the bar, and Luke was grinning like a Cheshire cat. Then he went and gave her an almost deep kiss, 
One of his friends was holding up a cell phone. I wanted so bad for her to stop him or something, but she just went along with it. Oh, Bob, I'm so sorry she stopped as she saw his reaction. His jaw was literally hanging open. He had to get out of here, excuse me, for a second bathroom. He stuttered as he got up and walked away. He went inside and locked the door behind him. He splashed some water on his face and gripped the sink as hard as he could. He remembered the night she was talking about Sharon usually got home around 11.30. But that night it was almost 2.30 when she came in. Vicky had called and told him that she was staying at her place for a while because she had had too much to drink. She would call a cab for Sharon when she was more sober. This had happened a few times before, and Bob had always been relieved at Vicky, and the girls were so responsible about not getting a DUI. He always thought that getting a little blitzed was part of the fun of going out and cutting loose. He honestly wasn't mad about it. He also remembered what happened that night when she got home. He remembered being woken up to the warm sensation of Sharon's lips on his tool. This whole thing had taken him by surprise, and before he knew, knew it. Oh my God, honey, that was incredible, he said. I am sorry it was over so soon, but please let me make it up to you. Let's see what you got. As she stood up, he grabbed her head and gave her the deepest tongue kiss he could. He tasted some booze and a little bit of himself, but he was not grossed out at all after her performance. The least she deserved was a kiss. He broke their lip lock and started kissing the crook of her neck. She always giggled and squirmed when he would do that. He traced her collar down to between her jugs he had heard that some women had really sensitive. But Sharon was not one of those that was fine with him, though, because after eight years together, he had found a few other places on her body that would excite her. He let his tongue drift slowly all the way down through her narrow strip of hair, and between her swollen lips he pushed her onto the bed. Please, baby, make love to me. He said he could feel her body ensing up. He wanted to warn her about waking their daughter, that that was fantastic. Oh my God, baby, I haven't felt that good in a while. She stopped talking after that, and they engaged in some of the hottest wrestling they ever had. I taste pretty good, don't I? She said as she broke from their kiss. Sweetest thing ever, baby, he replied. But don't think we are done. You started. Something that I now have to finish. He smiled. This was turning into the best night ever. Screw me, lover, she growled as she looked at him with lust-filled eyes. Tonight he had a beautiful woman who wanted him to take her. They both had an amazing sex. He snapped back to the present now. He was shaking with rage as he felt that she got all worked up over her boyfriend and came home to take it out on him. Damn. He thought what if she was thinking of him while we were having sex. He splashed more water on his face, dried himself off, and went back outside. As he sat down, he saw a look of sympathy on Vicky's face, but had no idea how to respond. His sandwich was forgotten on the table. What else do I need to know, Vicky? He asked honestly, Bob. That is about all there is. The last couple of girls' nights have been at Hannah's house with wine and lingerie parties at work. Sharon had been acting very cool towards Luke, even though he has been really sniffing around her. I had thought that it was done, but just yesterday I saw them talking. They shut up when I came around the corner, so I have no idea what they are up to, but I am done with it. I figured you need to know, and maybe you can do something, since she is not, not listening to her friends anymore. The waiter came to bring us our check. He grabbed it before she could touch it and started fishing out his credit card. I want to see these guys in action together and maybe scare them straight, he said. Sharon says you guys are going to the Red Horse Saloon this week, so this Thursday when you guys go, I am going to show up and observe from across the room. He stopped talking abruptly as he noticed the horrified look on Vicky's face. What did I say wrong? He asked. Bob Hanna has a doctor's appoint appointment early in the morning. Friday and Gil is going to see her brother in Florida if Sharon is going out Thursday. It isn't with us. She reached across the table and grabbed my hand. I am so sorry, honey. She said sadly. I know better than to ask if you are okay. But here is my home phone number call any time to talk to Ron. Or I... Her husband was a marriage counselor by trade, so talking to him could potentially be helpful. Thank you for telling me, Vicky. I know it must have been difficult for you, but I really think you are being a good person and a good friend. I don't know what is going to happen going forward, but now I know what is going on, and I can take some action. Thank you again. As he thanked her, he stood up to leave, signing the credit card bill, and walked out. Wednesday. Today was a breakthrough on the project Bob had been working on. They had been able to secure pre-manufactured parts from a startup company in Harrisburg. 
that would shave two months off the turnaround time, which still gave them at least a week's cushion, even with spotty transport logistics two more phone calls, and this plan would be done two months ahead and save the military millions. The cash bonus would be as huge as Bob had thought it would be, and the recognition that having his name on the project would bring would be nice. He should be as happy as the proverbial clam. Instead, he was thinking about how much he didn't want to go home and do what he figured he had to. He had decided to see what he could find out on his own about this affair he couldn't access her work email, but he didn't think they would put anything on there since it was monitored by AI he did log into her Yahoo Mail account and found nothing she could have made, a separate account. But he would have no way of knowing that, until he got on their home computer, part of the problem was that Bob knew he wasn't very tech-savvy. The idea of buying surveillance cameras or rigging his house with voice-activated microphones sounded cool in theory, but he already had a plan in place for confronting her. All he wanted was as much information as he could get to know how far he would have to go to try and save or try to scuttle his marriage. Sharon had already picked up their daughter Casey from his parents and had conned him into bringing Chinese home when he sent her the text asking what she wanted. She replied after ten years together, and eight of those married. You should know what I like, babe. He couldn't resist a dig in his reply. I just wanted to make sure you were still happy with the status quo. His phone dinged back. You are right. Get me an extra egg roll smiley face if it weren't for the bombshell dropped yesterday. He would have been so happy to come come home an hour early and just spend time with the wife and kid when he looked at his clock. However, he reminded himself that before the project began, this time would have been considered two hours late. He also realized that he hadn't been home early with his family on a Friday since this had started. Add to that the being tired and stressed even when he was home, it was easy to see how Sharon could feel neglected, not that she had any right to do what she was doing. Walking through the front door, he saw his wife reaching up for a wine bottle. He stood there and just admired her form. At 31, she was a woman in her prime. Her 5'7 in frame had just enough curves to be mouth-watering. He had a great view of her tight bum, even apparent through the bulky sweatpants she was wearing. She had her hair pulled back in a ponytail, and when she turned around and hit him with that million-what smile, he couldn't help but think how damn lucky he was to be with her. Then he remembered, I am so glad you were home, babe. How was work? She walked over to give him a nice kiss on the lips. Pretty good. We had a major breakthrough on some supplies. So we are probably going to be done at least a month ahead of schedule. Maybe I know I have been out of it with this project. I also know that it sucks that I can't talk specifics with you about it due to the fact that it is classified. I just want you to know that you and Casey are the most important things in my life, and I will do everything in my power to protect us as long as I can. He said, looking in her eyes, did he see a flash of regret or guilt, or was he just looking for something? This was one of those days he cursed not being able to read people he was often labeled a straight shooter. He tended to speak plain and direct and expected others to do the same. He knew he could initially come off as abrasive, but when people got to see that he meant what he said and that he would be upfront about things they actually liked him, his technique had worked for him for his 34 years, and he saw very little reason to change until now. Oh, honey, she replied, we both love you to death and understand, I will admit, I wish you could be plugged into the family a bit more. I get that this is only temporary. It does make me feel so good to hear you acknowledge the fact, though. She almost looked like she had tears forming in her eyes. Was she really this good of an actress? So can you tell me what getting the project done early means for you? She asked as she started pulling the food containers from the back well. First and foremost, it means a very significant pay bonus. I don't know how much until the project gets greenless, but we are not talking chump change. Then there is the fact that handling our first government project and being so damn good at it should get the company more work. My name being led will also get some government-type headhunters looking to scoop me up. The bosses know this, so I should be able to leverage some pretty good stuff out of them, assuming everything goes the way it should. As he was talking, he tried to eat his sweet and sour pork with chopsticks, but it always takes too long, so he grabbed a fork. Haven't I told you all? This already he asked her around a chunk of pork. Not that I remember, babe, she replied. All I remember you saying was that you were going to be taking on a big contract that you couldn't talk about, but it should be worth it. Then it seems I haven't really talked to you since then. She looked kind of sad, she perked up, but it looks like I will have my husband back soon.
He looked at her time to do a little fishing, so what barrow are you ladies hitting up tomorrow night? Should I stop by after work and make sure you all are good to drive home? He asked, with what he hoped was a light tone. Oh, H, um, actually, we decided to hit the Red Horse Saloon for some line dancing, but I think we will be done before you get off work. She looked down at her orange chicken as she said this. His heart broke. Casey chose that time to be done with her egg roll and asked him to read her stories. He picked up his plate and rinsed it off in the sink, then grabbed her up and took her to the living room. For the next hour, he dode on his child reading story after story. Until she was fast asleep, he heard snoring from the sofa and saw his beautiful wife curled up with her own book dropped in her lap. He picked up his daughter and walked her upstairs to her bedroom. He put her into her bed and tucked her in. His eyes started filling up with tears as he thought about what the next days were going to bring. He wanted her to remember these good nights with her mother and father, and not the rough nights that were likely on the horizon. Wiping away his tears, he walked back downstairs to the couch where his wife was asleep. He kissed her lips gently and pulled a blanket up over her so she wouldn't get cold. Then he went looking for her phone. He found it plugged into the wall on the nightstand in their room. He swiped up left and right to unlock it and started looking through her texts. It didn't take long to find what he was looking for. Scrolling back, he saw they started about three months ago. Hey, pretty lady, it was fun seeing you girls out dancing last night, same here. Bob works late on Thursdays, and the in-laws watch the Rugrats so we can have girl time. Your hubby is a good guy, letting you get out of the house every once in a while. Yes, he is great for the next few weeks. All the texts were pretty harmless. Then this exchange, Vicky read me the riot act today about our lunch breaks. I was pissed, but she has a good point. I don't want people to get the wrong idea about us. It is just harmless talking. We aren't doing anything wrong. She asked if Bob would be okay with how we were acting, and that made me think that we are maybe sending out the wrong vibe. Besides, I don't need need to be sharing all my problems with another guy. I am going to try to talk to Bob. I understand, but if you can't get his attention, you know where to find me. I will even buy you dinner if need it, just as friends Bob didn't remember her trying to talk to him about anything. But that also could have been the time that he found out they needed what was essentially food-grade stainless steel for the application. He spent days trying to track down a supplier that could manufacture the quantities they needed during that time. You probably could have dropped a bomb on him, and he, he wouldn't have noticed so far. All the texts were harmless from her end. He figured it was pretty obvious that Assot was playing her, though. How could she not see this? He scrolled down to see the next set of texts. You need to give those back today. What are you talking about, smiley face? You know, damn good and well, my friends are so pissed at me right now, and I don't blame them if Bob finds out how much of a 304 I was acting like he may leave me, so you don't want me to show him the video, smiley face. What video you can't let anyone at work see that Sam was there, and he took a video on his phone. I will make sure he deletes it. You will owe me. Though smiley face, fine. I can't lose Bob, not after last night. What happened last night? It is really none of your business. Was he pissed off? You got home late and drunk? Oh, hell no. Let's just say there was some serious world rocking going on and leave it at that smiley face. So some dirty dancing with me got you all worked up for your hubby. He, you should be thanking me, smiley face. You were being a jerk last night was off the charts, and it was because Bob and I love each other. Now give me my panties back and make sure that damn video gets erased. That sentence makes me sound... Like such a 304, Bob deserves better than me. No, he is lucky to have you. He wasn't there to keep an eye on you, was he? I'm sure he is a great guy. But you go out by yourself a lot. I don't need anyone to keep an eye on me. Just be the friend you claim you are and take care of what I ask. Please, sorry, of course I will help you, and then I let you buy me dinner, smiley face. Just make sure no one sees that video, and I will do whatever you want, nothing until last Monday. I heard ladies' night was canceled. How about that dinner smiley face? Not a good idea, so. Sorry, oh, come on. Hubby is going to be at work, and the girls are leaving you alone one night out with a friend, and we can chat about stuff like we used to in the cafeteria. Besides, you owe me smiley face fine. I will meet you at the Red Horse at eight. Nope, smiley face. Meet me at the TGIF that is in the Sharon Hotel. They have great drink specials. And I don't want to be yelling over a bunch of drunken idiots. I will be getting a room in case we drink too much fine, but this is just a couple friends having dinner, and I do owe you for making sure that video never got out. Got it is bad enough that people from work heard about it. Don't worry about it.
I watched Sam delete the video, and soon someone else will do something scandalous, and you will be fine. See you at eight there. It was probably the end of a marriage. How many times do you see your wife accept a date with another man at a restaurant or bar in a hotel? How can this possibly go well? How could she possibly think that sex wasn't on the table? He closed out the text messages and plugged the phone back on the charger. He got undressed and slid into the bed alone. Sleep was a long time coming. Thursday, she came down the stairs wearing her little black dress that, that she always wore when they would go out on their dates. She looked beautiful. She stopped at the bottom of the stairs as she saw him sitting at the table. Oh, Bob, I didn't expect you home this early today, babe. She looked kind of pale. We need to talk, Sharon, he said with almost no emotion in his voice. This is probably the most important talk we will ever have. Please have a seat. She sat down. She looked scared. She went to hold his hand like they would normally do, but he pulled it away. I know that there is no girl night out. I know that you have been seeing Luke Jonas behind my back. He started Bob. Please let me explain. She was cut off abruptly by him slamming the table with his fist. Damn it, Sharon, listen to me, he yelled. You don't get to talk until I have said my piece. She cowered back and started to cry. He looked impassively at her and continued as I was saying, I know you have been cuddling with this Luke at lunch. I know you have been dancing with him at the Red Horse Saloon. I know you took your panties off and gave them to him after some sexy bump and grinding on the dance floor. I know the only reason you jumped me three weeks ago was because you were all worked up over him. I also know that you were going on a date with him tonight at a restaurant in a hotel where your boyfriend will have a room ready. I don't know if you have slept with him or given him a bee job, yet I am not sure what would have stopped you if you haven't. He paused, trying to get his anger under control. Sharon, you lied by omission to me about Luke. You lied by omission to me about about your pantyless dancing, and you lied to me about going out with the girls. Frankly, I am tired, and my trust in you is broken. I'm not sure I even want to work on this marriage anymore. Your actions make me think you don't care about this marriage anymore. So I will give you three choices, he held up a finger. Choice one. You walk out that door and go see your a-hole boyfriend even if you don't sleep together tonight. This choice will end our marriage. Zero chance of me wanting to save it. He held up a second finger. Choice two. You and me sit here all night and you try to convince me to work on staying married to you. You will have a hard sell because I am not inclined to trust a single word out of your mouth, however you might be able to do it. Because I do love you and we have a child to think about. I would say you have a 50% of me working to save this, he held up a third finger. Choice three, you take me to see your Romeo tonight. You tell him to never talk or contact you again in front of me. Then you let me and him talk for at least 15 minutes out of your shot. This choice will gain you the most respect and will also go the farthest towards making me want to work on us if you haven't slept with or performed or received oral sex with him. I promise I will be 100% in as far as making this relationship work. Also note if you have slept with or performed or received sex with him. This is the only option that might possibly allow for us to work out. She looked like she was about to throw up and was staring at him and what could only be described as horror, 0, 050 or 100. Sharon, what is it going to be? 0, 050 or 100? Sharon, what is it going to be? The question hung in the air for almost a minute. It looked like my wife was trying not to vomit when she looked up at me. Bob, I am so sorry about everything, and I desperately need to talk to you in answer to your question, though. Do you want to drive, or do you want me to? Well, that was unexpected. I really did think she would walk out on us to love her boy. I thought for sure she would sit here all night trying to make excuses for her behavior, bringing me to see her a whole really did win her some points. She was still in the red. Though I picked up my keys and followed her out to my car, I opened the door for her out of force of habit, and she almost started to cry as I was pulling out of the driveway. She looked over at me. I really screwed us up, didn't I? She asked in a small voice. Yes, Sharon, you really did, I, I replied, keeping my eyes on the road. What can I do to fix it, she asked. I thought for a bit. I had a couple plans I was formulating. Well, first thing, complete honesty from here on out.
I shouldn't have to say this, but apparently you think it is okay to not mention things I should know are out and out lie to me along with that. You are going to have to find way to make me believe what you were saying. I don't know how you plan to do that. But frankly, I am not the one who ruined our trust. Another thing I don't feel I should have to mention. But I'm going to, he is dead to you. If we stay together, you do not talk to him during work. You do not ask him how his day is going if he shows up at a bar. You are at. You leave if you cannot leave. You call me immediately. You do not accept drinks or gifts from him. No matter what he says, he receives a no interaction from you next thing. When we get back from tonight, you are going to tell me everything. Even stuff you don't think I want to hear. I understand that I have been consumed by this project, so I will take some blame if you have hard feelings for me. Then let me know. And the last thing for now, plan on making time for marriage counseling sessions. If you want to pick the counselor, feel free to do so. Maybe Ron can suggest someone this is contingent upon certain information. However, as I finished talking, her phone beeped that she had a text. She looked down and got even more pale. It's him. He is wondering where I am, she said softly. I held out my hand for her phone. Wordlessly, she passed it to me. I scrolled back through her texts. There were a couple new ones from earlier today. Hey, I got a room with a jacuzzi, maybe after dinner. Can relax, bring your bikini smiley face. You are not going to be able to get me drunk enough to get into a hot tub with you. I am not bringing a bikini. We will have to see. You know how you get when you are drunk. Maybe you won't need a bikini, winky face. And then just now, where you at? I got a glass of wine waiting for you. I texted back. Running a little late, I got a surprise for you. You, you brought your bikini, excellent. I handed the phone back to my wife. She read the texts and just hung her head. You know, he is not helping your cause, right? Just the text from, across from the disconcerted play buoy, I couldn't help but size him up a bit. Dark hair, thin build, and dressed to perfection. I guess he would be considered attractive, but I've never been good at looking at guys. He was probably about as tall as me, although it was tough to tell because he was seated. I couldn't help but notice that he kept glancing at the glass of wine that was sitting across the table from him. This almost confirmed my suspicions. This was the time to play it cool. I knew roughly what I wanted to have happened, but I was having to make some of this up as I went along. Thinking on my feet was not one of my strengths. And here, you thought that your surprise was her in a bikini. I said with a half smile, you really think she told you everything. He replied with a smirk, now that suck sucker was in front of me. I felt calm. This was a problem I could handle, actually, I do. I have known that woman for 10 years, and I have been married to her for eight. I think I have a better handle on her than some pretty boy who has been taking a run at her for three months. I kept the smile on my face. The waiter came by and asked for my drink order. I ordered a double Johnny Walker Black on the rocks. She gives a great, he said, still trying to smirk. He glanced at the glass of wine he had ordered for her again. Yes, she does. I gave him a full smile this time, but I don't think you were talking from experience you want pictures. He asked, half laughing, this guy was trying to get under my skin. I realized I should be reaching across the bar for him, but instead I ended up chuckling. You don't have pictures. If she had gone that far with you, there would be no need for you to spike her drink. What are wannabe molester using these days, GHB Rohypnol or just good old X? I was working on a hunch, but his shocked look removed all doubt. He shrank back as I leaned across the table from him. Now I was pissed, you little son of a witch. I should kick thee out of you right here and now but I am not sure I wouldn't kill you. I don't need to go to jail right now. I gave my wife three choices, and I'm now giving you three choices. I put one finger under his nose, one you go bye-bye, you go and apologize to my wife now and quit your job tomorrow. I promise not to come after you, then you leave town. I raised another finger too, you go to the cops and admit to spiking my wife's drink, serve your scent, and leave my wife alone. I will be watching you, but I won't come after you. Then you leave town, I raise the third finger. Three, I sign us up for boxing classes in four weeks. You and I step into the ring. Personal injury waivers will be signed, and neither one of us leaves until they are unconscious. And when you wake up, you still leave my wife alone. Then you leave town. The waiter dropped off my scotch just as I finished up. I took a long drink and appreciated the burn time to get back to cool. You must think I am an idiot. Why would I go along with any of those options? He sneered. 
I gave him what I hoped was a menacing grin, because you don't want to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your miserable existence. Every time you walk to your car in the dark, you will wonder if me or one of my friends will be waiting with a ball bat to crush your knees and stomp on your balls every time you go to open your door at home. You won't know if I or one of my friends is going to jump in and tie you to a chair and cut off your balls every time you go out to a bar. You won't know if me or one of my buddies is going to slip something in your drink and arrange for some backdoor lovin', then stomp your balls. You wouldn't do any of that. You're a teddy bear. At least that. Across from the disconcerted play buoy, I couldn't help but size him up a bit. Dark hair, thin build, and dressed to perfection. I guess he would be considered attractive, but I've never been good at looking at guys. He was probably about as tall as me, although it was tough to tell because he was seated. I couldn't help but notice that he kept glancing at the glass of wine that was sitting across the table from him. This almost confirmed my suspicions. This was the time to play it cool. I knew roughly what I wanted to have happened, but I was having to make some of this up as I went along. Thinking on my feet was not one of my strengths, and here... You thought that your surprise was her in a bikini. I said with a half smile, you really think she told you everything. He replied with a smirk, now that suck sucker was in front of me, I felt calm. This was a problem I could handle, actually, I do. I have known that woman for ten years, and I have been married to her for eight. I think I have a better handle on her than some pretty boy who has been taking a run at her for three months. I kept the smile on my face. The waiter came by and asked for my drink order. I ordered a double Johnny Walker Black on the rocks. She gives a great, he said, still trying to smirk. He glanced at the glass of wine he had ordered for her again. Yes, she does. I gave him a full smile this time, but I don't think you were talking from experience you want pictures. He asked, half laughing. This guy was trying to get under my skin. I realized I should be reaching across the bar for him, but instead I ended up chuckling. You don't have pictures. If she had gone that far with you, there would be no need for you to spike her drink. What are wannabe molester using these days, GHB Rohypnol or just good old X? I was working on a hunch, but his shocked look removed all doubt. He shrank back as I leaned across the table from him. Now I was pissed, you little son of a witch. I should kick thee out of you right here and now. But I am not sure I wouldn't kill you. I don't need to go to jail right now. I gave my wife three choices, and I'm now giving you three choices. I put one finger under his nose, one you go bye-bye, you go and apologize to my wife now and quit your job tomorrow. I promise not to come after you, then you leave town. I raised another finger too, you go to the cops and admit to spiking my wife's drink, serve your scent and leave my wife alone. I will be watching you, but I won't come after you. Then you leave town, I raise the third finger. Three, I sign us up for boxing classes in four weeks. You and I step into the ring. Personal injury waivers will be signed, and neither one of us leaves until they are unconscious. And when you wake up, you still leave my wife alone. Then you leave town. The waiter dropped off my scotch just as I finished up. I took a long drink and appreciated the burn time to get back to cool. You must think I am an idiot. Why would I go along with any of those options? He sneered. I gave him what I hoped was a menacing grin, because you don't want to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your miserable existence. Every time you walk to your car in the dark, you will wonder if me or one of my friends will be waiting with a ball bat to crush your knees and stomp on your balls every time you go to open your door at home. You won't know if I or one of my friends is going to jump in and tie you to a chair and cut off your balls every time you go out to a bar. You won't know if me or one of my buddies is going to slip something in your drink and arrange for some backdoor lovin', then stomp your balls. You wouldn't do any of that. You're a teddy bear. At least that is what your wife told me after I got done screwing her the other night. His face was gaining some color back. I took another sip of my scotch. I reached into my pocket and hit the button that started the voice record function on my phone. Hopefully it would pick these next few sentences of dialogue up. I really should have planned this better. You were planning on drugging and assaulting my wife tonight, scum sucker. Are you willing to bet a lifetime of pain and suffering that I wouldn't do exactly what I said? It was time to go fishing. The drugs were just to get her in the mood for when I brought my friends over. We were going to make her airtight tonight. My cool evaporated. I was able to grab his collar with my left hand and haul him toward me. I couldn't get much power behind the punch with my right fist because I was sitting down. I did hear a satisfying crunch and felt his nose give you scum sucker. I am going to call the cops. 
He shrieked as he held his nose go for it, as sad I would love for them to test the remaining wine in that glass for drugs, and then listen to the recording I have of you admitting to it. I shouted within ten minutes the cops were investigating the disturbance. Apparently, two state troopers were taking a lunch break at the subway across the street. They took my statement and bagged the remaining wine and wine glass for testing. They searched Luke and found a packet of white powder he asked for a lawyer and refused to say anything else. They listened to my recording and took my cell phone as evidence it was difficult, but you could just make out Luke talking about the drugs and the plan gang bang it was almost four in the morning before Sharon and I were able to leave the police station. After she was done giving her statement, one of the cops spent almost 15 minutes telling her what a great guy I was and how I had saved her from a drug-induced assault. She was a basket case. By, by the end of it all, Luke stayed in police custody. We were able to use her cell phone to give a quick explanation to my parents. They were understanding and promised to take care of Casey. They decided to take her to the zoo she was going to love that after pulling in the garage and shutting the car off, both of us just looked at each other. She unbuckled her seatbelt and gave me a hug over the console. I let her cry into my shoulder for about a minute, then pushed her gently away. Sharon, we still need to talk, but it is late and we need to go to bed tomorrow. We are both calling into work and spending the day together to figure out how to move forward sound like a plan. Yes, Bob. Bed sounds wonderful. In a small voice, she asked, can I please sleep in the bed with you? Of course, baby, I woke up the next morning spooned up to my woman. I thought about how we got to where we were last night and I felt that things might be able to be okay. We still had a couple conversations to go before I would commit to anything. We grabbed breakfast, said IHOP, and chattered about Grace and the fun her and my parents must be having. We managed to keep everything nice and light after a final cup of coffee. We paid the bill and headed home. We sat down at the kitchen table and looked at each other. Okay, I guess I will start this. I said I think you can see what a bad person Luke is now, so I am not going to beat that dead horse. He said you gave a good B job and that you called me a teddy bear after screwing him a few days ago? Is any of that true? No, the farthest I went with him was that awful night at the Red Horse. I understand how bad my actions were that night. But it never went any farther than that, she replied. How can you make me believe that you lied about going to see him last night, and you lied by omission about that night at the bar and your entire relationship with him? I felt it was time to get all the cards on the table. I have been racking my brain trying to figure that one out. And I think I might have something. What about a polymer test? She asked polymer test. Did she mean polygraph? I had to smile a little bit. You mean a polygraph test? A lie detector test? She nodded her head. Yes, make an appointment and ask me any. Questions you want, just tell me the time and the place. The sincere look on her face was so adorable. I know that those tests are not 100% accurate, but I would feel a lot better if she came up telling the truth. I will see what I can do. It might take some time to get it set up. But that is a good idea, actually. More than I would have thought, I replied. She smiled. Okay, that is a good start. And we will revisit the extent of your affair later. I guess my next question is the biggest one. This is the one that hurts me the most and the one that has the biggest impact on our relationship. How do we go forward? You being ashamed and not telling me about the panty incident. I can understand. I don't like it, but I can understand it. I have a tough time dealing with the fact that you got real close with another guy without telling me. But if you thought it was just a word work friendship, I can kind of see that what I can't understand and what makes want to just walk away before I get hurt again is when you told me you were going out with the girls and you were going to meet him for dinner, a 100% direct lie. Forget about the consequences. You broke my heart when you told me you were going out with the girls. I know my eyes were watering, I couldn't help it. Bob, all I can do is tell you my mindset at the time. First, let me say that I am so sorry for lying to you about everything when you took this project for the first time since we have been together. I felt like I was in second place. I am not blaming you or your work. I know why you took it and why it was so important to you. I am just telling you how I felt. I started feeling down, and then Vicky's sister said something I couldn't get out of my head. She said to look for romance someplace else. I never took that to mean that I should cheat on you. I took it to mean that while you were preoccupied with this project, it would be okay to find what I was looking for somewhere else. Inter Luke, I didn't realize it fully, but he was filling the desire I had to be special. He asked me about my day. He asked me about my kid and family. We talked about hobbies I thought were cool, basically. When we were talking, it was about me. 
She took a breath and studied my face for a reaction. I don't think I gave her one. When Vicky took me to task for how it looked at lunchtime, I realized what I was doing. I was using Luke to get what I felt I couldn't get from you, and honestly, I did cool it off at the time. I thought he was just being a friend. But I wanted to get things right with you the night that things got crazy. I didn't invite him or his friends. I got there early and they showed up before the rest of the girls. Luke was buying drinks for everyone, including me. I ended up getting as drunk as I have been since we have been together. I did some stupid and shameful things of which you were aware. But then we had some pretty mind-blowing sex. And that confused me even more. How could I be such a 304 without you there? And then have it turn out to be so wonderful with you later. She got up and grabbed a glass of water after drinking half of it. She sat back down. She continued. Then came damage control I knew you would be pissed about about what I did. And rightfully so. If you got drunk and kissed another woman on a dance floor, I would go for your balls. I even knew it would be worse because we had such a hot session afterwards. You would wonder if I was thinking of something or someone else. So I made another one of my many mistakes. I tried to use my friend Luke to help cover it up, and supposedly he did. He made sure I knew about it, so here I am, owing a favor to my friend who only wants to take me to dinner on a night that my usual friends are unable to make. I am still lonely because I don't think you were going to be home until late. So in a moment of stupidity, I screw up and I am so sorry our relationship has always been based on trust in each other. I screwed up. Tears were running down her face at this point, even though she wasn't sobbing a hell. I got up and gave her a hug. I put a long kiss on her. Pulling away, I had to say something. We aren't there yet, and it is going to take a bit. But if you are in 100%, so am I, Sharon, and I want to counseling for a little bit. Talking out my issues helped me get over them. The big takeaway for me was that just because communication was a strong point when we first got together, we still had to work on it. The counselor also suggested Sharon get tested for hormonal imbalance 31 years old. Was a bit early to worry about it, but not unheard of of, and after a few tests and changing her birth control, she felt better. Unfortunately, I can't say that we are back to where we were, but we are back to good. The polygraph test showed her to be truthful about all the difficult questions I asked, as for the little nagging in my head about the veracity of those tests. Well, I can live with that I did actually sign up for boxing lessons. Sharon got interested in self-defense classes being taught there, and Thursday Girls Bar Night became Thursday Girls Self-Defense Night. Sharon decided to, to sign us up for martial arts classes. She is a natural, and I can barely hang with her. Sparring together is the best foreplay we have found. The project came in six weeks ahead of schedule, and under budget, my company is now playing with the big boys when it comes to government contracts. They tried to move me to a vice presidency position, and I turned it down because it required too much travel. Instead, I basically created a special projects division, and now had that it came with a new office and executive assistant's assistant. My new executive assistant has the nicest bum and a megawatt smile. So far, Noon has complained about me and my wife working together as long as we make money. I don't think anyone will. Most of the 38000 bonus for my initial project went into the college fund for Casey. However, I kept enough out for an all-inclusive resort week. With my wife, my parents were actually ready to give my daughter back. When we got home, I got a misdemeanor assault charge for punching the, the best 300 bucks and 40 hours of community service I have ever spent. Luke got three to five years for attempted assault and possession of a controlled substance. The white powder was GHB. He also got the kicked out of him when he was walking to his car at night. No, it wasn't me. Apparently, Luke had done the date assault drug trick before, and one of his victim's brothers caught up with him. The guy got two to three for felony assault. I put 50 bucks a month in his prison commissary account. Dear listeners, help us reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Something super special awaits once we hit that milestone. Subscribe now.